Hey, hello, this is Cap, and welcome back to the New Player Career Build Series. This is episode number five. In this episode, we're going to talk about some more complex navigation. Yesterday, I released a tutorial on my bearing panel. This is a system that uses GPS coordinates and allows you to navigate directly to a GPS coordinate that you select on the map. This panel also shows the bearing to the heading, the distance to the waypoint in different units, and the estimated time of arrival. For a tutorial on that, you can go ahead and watch the video linked in the description. In this episode, we're going to integrate that system into our boat so that we can easily navigate in any weather condition. This is something that a lot of new players struggle with. The ability to navigate is very important for success in the game. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started on uh, modifying our boat to be able to operate with this new system. So we want to go to Selection Grid and we'll grab the content. So if you downloaded that bearing panel from the workshop, you'll see it here. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to integrate it in with our boat. All right, so we're going to make sure that the physics sensor, the blue arrow, is pointing forwards. We're going to go ahead and paste that. All right, good. Next thing we want to do is we're going to take the keypad and we're going to cut that. And we're going to put it somewhere. Uh, right now, we're not worried about making this beautiful. All we want to do is make this functional. So we're going to stick the keypad just somewhere there on the floor. All right, next thing we want to do here is we want to put our panel up. So our panel is going to show us the heading we need to turn to and the heading we need to go to in order to get to the waypoint. It's going to show us the distance in the selected units we want, so we can change that to whatever units we want to use, and then the estimated time of arrival, how long it's going to take us to get there, and we can do that in seconds, minutes, or hours. So let's go ahead and we'll configure the panel. So if we do the select tool and we click on the microcontroller, you'll see we have these property uh, drop-down boxes. So this allows us to change. So we're going to change to nautical miles, Nautical miles is the, is the unit we want to use in the boat. And then we want to do this in minutes. I find that to be the best. Uh, seconds isn't really all that helpful. We can get some big numbers if we're far away. Uh, minutes tends to be a better unit. I find uh, in hours we're going to be in decimal place the whole time. So minutes is a pretty good uh, way to tell how long it's going to take to get there. Now, the issue is this. We currently have a regular compass. Now, this regular. let's make sure we merge this to the deck. So currently we have this regular compass. This really isn't giving us uh, all that great of information. We could grab one of these compass blocks, all right, this compass sensor. And if we aim that, it will read us a number. It will read us turns. We can then convert that into degrees. The better way to do this is this, and we're going to actually configure our panel. So if we go ahead and we take the logic, and we go to composite, and we hover over this physics sensor, if we look at channel 17, it says compass heading. So what we can do is we can actually use this as our compass heading. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to edit our microcontroller. And we're going to go ahead and go in there. We're going to go to logic. And now we want to find where our physics sensor is right here. We'll just copy one of the. Actually, we'll do it fresh so you guys can see it. Composite read number. And I'll grab that. We'll then drag the composite signal there. Now, remember, it was channel 17. We could find that by just hovering over the physics sensor. So now channel 17 is going to read out to our compass. All right. And so let's see, we'll actually, yeah, we'll put it down here. All right, so this is going to read out to our compass. Now let's see what the raw data is. So if we go ahead and we grab this 17, we don't have a node for it. The panel only goes up to three. So what we'll do is go exp expand that. That will give us a fourth channel to work with on our panel. And we're going to go ahead to the read value. We'll update this. And then this should read out on channel four. The panel. So if you have never worked with these panels before, you can change the different types of things you have in each slot. There's four slots, one, two, three, and four. And so right there, you can do that. Uh, you can set the values and you can set the channel number. That's important. So channel one is bearing two, which is our heading. Two is our distance. Three is our estimated time of arrival. And then four here is blank because I put in none. So what we want to do here is we're just going to do a dial for now. And this is going to be compass. All right. And we'll leave the numbers as this for now. We'll change it later. Uh, we want to do channel number two, four. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. And if we go back there into our panel, you'll notice that we turn, we made this channel four. So that's plugging into channel four there. And that's going to read right out into that gauge. So let's update that and spawn it. And what we want to do here is we want to look at the number that it gives us. All right. Now, as you see, it's negative 0.12. That really doesn't do anything for us. What we want to do is we want to convert this number, which is turns, into a compass heading. So the compass is 0 to 360 degrees. 360 is all the way north. 090 is east. 180 is south. 270 is west. And then you have all the degrees in between are your little variations. So this is going to tell us 
what heading we have to turn to in degrees to be able to get there. So we need this to also read out there. So what we need to do is go back in and we need to convert it from its native state into a usable state that will read out the compass for us. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our panel again. We'll edit that microcontroller and we'll go on in here. Now we're going to go down here and we want to make a formula. So what we can do here is we can take a function and we'll plug this in there. Now what this is going to do is convert it from what the game is using into a compass. And that's what we want to do here. So we're going to go in here and we want to start with a parentheses followed by a parentheses. This is going to be negative x times 360 parentheses plus 360 parentheses percentage sign 360. So this is going to convert what the compass will read out to us in game, which is turns into a actual compass reading that will now allow us to navigate more realistically. So we're just going to drag this over here and this will plug into channel four again. So we'll just move that a little bit so you can see it. So now we have a compass that will read the current heading we're going. So now if we know what heading we need to go to go to the waypoint, we know where we presently are, we can then turn. So let's update this. And let's go ahead and we'll spawn. So now if we look at the compass, as you can see, that's 4-4. Four, four. That means we're heading of 0-4-4. Four, four. If we look at that, that makes sense. East is 0 9, zero. North is 3-6-0, or essentially 0, one side or the other of it. And so from 0, 40 degrees, and that's 90 degrees. So if you look there, right in between north and east is about a 0 four, five. If you look at where we're headed, 0 four, six. So we're close, right in the money. All right, so next thing we're going to do, let's go ahead. We're going to put a waypoint out here. So let's actually put it off to the side here. And let's enter in the bearing. So what we need to do is we need to go in here, and we need to press input waypoint. And we're going to get the numbers in there that we need from the map. So again, you select it, the waypoint of the map by right-clicking set waypoint. You then click on this, and then you can input the waypoint and then submit. Make sure you submit it. Now we'll put those in. Now it's going to show us the bearing to the heading we need to turn to is 009. So 9 over there. It is 0.26, in this case nautical miles away. Because we're not moving, the ETA is 0. And as you can see, the compass is turning because we are slowly drifting to the side. So let's start up the boat. And let's grab the helm, start up the boat, and we'll go forward. So you notice as we turn, the compass is turning. We're going to change the numbers on this in a moment. But as we turn, you'll see that we're heading to uh, 050 is now where it wants to go. So we're going to turn to 050. And you'll notice if we turn where it wants us to go, we're going to head right to the waypoint. So as you can see, we don't need to be perfectly precise, but as you can see, uh, heading of 04, 004, rather, and we are heading about 004, and we're going right to it. So 4, 4, and we're heading right to it. Let's move it to the side. So we'll set a waypoint over there. All right, so we can use the bearing system again. We look, we need to put it in the way, put it in the keypad every time we change it, so we need to input the new number, submit, you look and it tells us, okay, the bearing to the heading is 8.5, so we need to turn to the right to 8.5. And there we go. So we're heading right to that waypoint again. It's 0.17 nautical miles, and we're going to be there in 0.3 minutes. So each point is 6 uh, seconds. So if it's 0.3, that's 18 seconds. 0.2 is going to be 12 seconds. 0.1 is going to be 6 seconds. So now, as you can see, we're 12 seconds away. And we're coming up on 6 seconds away. There is 6 seconds away. And here's 3 seconds away. And bingo, there we are. All right, now you notice the bearing is behind us. That gives us the reciprocal, so we know it's behind us. Now, if you see your ETA is negative, you know that you're going away from it. As this gets more and more negative, we know we're going away from it. So what we want to do is we want to turn around. And you'll notice the bearing 2 is changing as well because now we're heading towards it. It's going to be a 270. And we're about 270. So this is a nice, simple way to navigate. It allows us to use GPS, but it also keeps us engaged. Often people will get in a moving map 
and they will essentially forget how to navigate because they're so reliant on that system. This allows you to get a little bit more intimate with your navigation. So right there, let's go ahead and put a practical case in here. So what's going to happen in game? Fog. All right, so here is 100% fog. Well, guess what? We'll go in here and we will shut off 3D waypoint. So we have no clue where that waypoint is. But if we look at our map, we plotted a course, right? So if we look here, we're going to enter that in. So the new one is in there. So it's telling us we need to turn to a bearing of 330. So let's turn to the right, 330. So right there, 330, 332, 333. We're really close. As you can see, the distance is counting down. The estimated time arrival is 1.5 minutes. And we'll be there in 1.5 minutes. So now you can see, even with 100% fog, we can very very easily navigate in game. So for example, if we get a tow mission and we're socked in with fog before, we couldn't navigate there. We're only using a simple compass and some simple navigation. Now we have a more complex navigation system that is telling us exactly how to get there. Now you do have to manually update this every once in a while. You know, later on we can automate this with an autopilot, but as you drift, as you're not perfectly precise on your heading, as you get closer, it's gonna, uh, you're gonna have more deviation. We won't go into all of the, those things, but as you see, 334, Let's turn back to 334. So you just want to constantly update this. But as you can see, we're still getting closer. The time is decreasing. We're now a minute away. So once that gets within seconds, what I'm going to do is, uh, within a second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the 3D waypoint on and see if we actually hit the waypoint we're going for. So 334, 336, we're close. As you can see, the distance is still counting down, and the time is there. So it would be... You know, we're just at 0 0.8, so it would be 8 times 6. That's 48 seconds away. So let's check it again. 333, 335. We're still good. Counting down there. So we're 0 0.2 nautical miles. ETA is coming up on 0 0.5, which is 30 seconds, so it would be 5 times 6. Each point, again, is 6, so that would be 30 seconds away. 332, 334. So let's turn just a hair. There we go. As you get closer, you're going to want to be a little bit more accurate. But this is going to take you precisely to where you want to go on the map. Even in this fog, very, with this very simple navigation system, we can do this. So we're point 0.1 away. That is six seconds away. I'm sorry, that's point 0.1 nautical miles. We are point 0.2, which is going to be 12 seconds away. So compass 332, 331, bingo. We're still headed right on the money. 0.04 nautical miles, 0.08, there is three seconds till we arrive. Two, one, stop. All right, so we're right there. Now let's go back here, and if we look, we navigated right to our waypoint in this fog. Can't see it, anything, but as you can see, we were able to navigate in the fog because of this uh, simple navigation system. So as you can see, this is really helpful. This is going to help us in game where even when the weather is poor, something as simple as this is going to allow us to navigate. So I hope you guys found that helpful, and this is going to allow you to navigate even in the worst conditions. Thanks for watching. Bye.